Hello, I hope you're doing well. Well, today we're going to talk a little more about password protection in MS Success. So to do that, what I actually need first, I'll go to create, I'll go to table design, and I'll input here a username. I'll also input password. Password, I'm going to choose a type of, mm, let me see, not type actually. I'll go back, I'll go down here to input mask. Click the three dots. I'll need to save the table first. Let me save it as login table. Underscore table. And press OK. I don't need a primary key, so I'll leave that. Here I'll choose password and click next. I'll click finish. This table is going to hold some some values initially so that the moment I'm going to validate, it can compare the values from the user and the values which are stored here. Now I'll provide my username, let me say my name Queen. I'll also provide a password which is one, two, three, and four. Now I can close this now because I don't need it, at least for now. I'll go back to create. Under forms, I'll choose more forms and select dialog. So this is the dialog form. I'll go to existing fields and I'll show all tables. It happens that I only have one table here. I'll double tap on this. And I'll also double tap on the username and the password to add them to the form. I'll select this and move them up here. Now let me let me fill in some color to this so that you can actually see these are like as the labels so that you that they are the things that you see once we we are done here. I'll go to format and I'll fill in a color black. And also to the form, I'm going to fill a color which is my favorite. Mm, sky blue, let me choose. Let me see. Okay, that looks nice. Let me check actually how this looks. Yeah, that is not so bad. You can see the username that we inputted earlier and the password. Now, I know for a login form, you'll not want something like this. You don't want your values to be to be seen the moment you want to log in. Now, let me go ahead and save this. I'll save it as login form. Login form. That should do the work. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is to get rid of the initialization of these values here. And what I'm going to do is to head back to design view. Under form, I'll go to property sheet. And then on load, I'll change this to event procedure. And click on the three dots on the side. Once this has loaded, I'm going to code a few lines of code. So I want the username field and the password field to be empty once I load the page. And to do that, I'll say username. I'll set it equal to the empty string. I think that should do it. That also do for the password. Mm. 
or maybe I should do not maybe I don't okay I can test this out okay it looks like it works there are no values here now if I press ok the default is actually going to close this form nothing is going to happen suppose i click like that i save these changes it is going to close now that is not what we want we want the form to validate to check and to ask the user to provide some now for me to do this i'll head back to design view design view under the ok button I'll choose the on click property under events on click. I'll change this to event procedure. Now here under the command one on click. I'm going to check. The first thing I'll do, I'll make sure that the user, the person who is logging into this database has values on the username field and the password field so for me to do this I'll write this is a function takes as input the field in this case me dot username and returns true if it is empty else it returns false if is null the username field then go ahead and message i'll message this user and tell him to please provide yeah, exactly. and I'll set the cursor there so that it is not hard for him to input some values username set focus yeah now else I'll also do the same for the password if is null password then message I'll leave a message like provide uh, password provide the password just like that and I'll set focus there as well do the trick now I can check this let me just check really quick now I've opened if block so I need to close them and if and if yeah now let me check if it is actually doing what I'm saying it is empty as we predicted earlier. Now let me hit OK. OK. This is pleasing. Please provide your username. Now suppose I provide a username. And you can see the cast automatically comes here so that I able to fill in the form. Now suppose I write my username and I press OK. Please provide the password. This this is the message that we inputted earlier from Microsoft Access. Now, let's head back and this time round, we are going to check for, we are going to add in some logic to 
check if the username and the password are actually correct and to do that what we're going to do is after the above I'll type in else and now what I'm going to do is to ask a question if the username dot value to get the exact thing that the user typed in the value of the username is equal to whatever the dlooker function is going to find the dlooker function takes input takes as in takes in some arguments and the first argument is the username column the username the user name and the second which is domain as a string that is where we put the quotation the domain is going to be the table the login table where the username is located so the login login table if the username dot value is equal to whatever is stored in the login table under username column then what we're going to do is message for example let's provide a message just to test this thing so message box mm, let me say correct And I'll also provide some additional information. And the title is going to be the title will be um, welcome, for example. Welcome. Else, if that is not correct. If it is not correct, I'll also provide a message box and I'll tell it incorrect. Please try again. I'll also provide additional information like then choose critical. The title will be incorrect. For example, in quotation, now at this point, what is happening is we are checking if whatever the user typed in is equal to whatever that is stored in the database, and we are getting that using the dlookup function. So if the two are correct, it is going to return true. Then what we say if it is true, we provide a message saying correct. Else, if the return is false, then we provide a message saying incorrect. The two are not the same. Now we can test this out. Let me close this block. We can test this out. Let me hit save, go back. And suppose I press OK, I get this message. Now let me put value which is not correct. For example, T, quint. That is not in the database. Now suppose I hit correct. Suppose I hit OK, I get incorrect. Please try again. Now suppose I provide correct information. I get correct and the welcome as the title now this what this is doing is actually checking the username only suppose I provide the wrong password like bunch of characters I hit OK I'm still going to be logged in now what we, we what we'll do is to add logic also to the password field and to do that I'll come here and get rid of 
this for now and what I'm going to do is type in and to check two conditions if the first condition is true and also the second condition is true there's no way the username can be wrong and the password to be correct or the username to be correct and the password to be wrong and still be logged in so I'll type in the password check that if it is equal to if it is equal to what whatever the dlocker function finds and I'll pass in the password and the second argument as the login table then we can go ahead and provide the messages and I'll close this I'll close this before I get a bunch of errors now what this is doing it is checking for the first condition and the second condition we are checking if the username dot value is equal to what is stored in the logging table under username column and we are also checking the value that is provided we compare that with whatever is stored in the dlooker function which is the password field under the login table if the two are correct for both cases then we provide a message saying correct else we provide a message saying incorrect try again and here i'll set focus on the password so that set focus now this should actually do the trick now we can go ahead and test this out if we come back here hit ok we get incorrect that is why because the password is actually not correct well suppose I get rid of this and also you can see the password is highlighted so that I'm able to type in the password type in the correct password press ok it is incorrect let me close all of this save go back to the login table the username is queen and the password is one two three and four now open the login form type in queen type in one two three and four and we get the message correct now typing bunch of characters press ok you get the message incorrect please try again i really hope we'll meet again next time please consider subscribing to the channel and leave a like to the video and share the knowledge to your friends and family thank you for staying this far i really appreciate it